Is it or isn't it? What's going on with titanium dioxide? Last month, the Court of Justice of the European Union ruled to overturn the European Commission's 2019 classification of titanium dioxide, food additive E171, as a carcinogen. Wait, what? The popular white food colouring agent titanium dioxide is cancer-causing? Yes. Or maybe no. It's complicated. Background. In 2019, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, the IARC, ruled that titanium dioxide is cancerous to breathe in and if your lungs were already overloaded. This prompted the European Food Safety Authority, the EFSA, to look at titanium dioxide and they decided there was not enough scientific evidence to confirm that it is safe in food. They said there's not been enough research to be able to rule out genotoxicity when consumed and as a result they could not set a limit for safe exposure. Titanium dioxide particles have been shown to accumulate in the body, although at low levels. Titanium dioxide consequently got banned for use as a food additive in Europe. The ban, which came into effect in August 2022 after a six-month transition period, was enacted as a regulation in the EU rather than a directive, meaning the ban took immediate effect and did not first have to be added into each country's local laws. It was also banned as an animal feed additive by the European Commission in November of 2021. It was not banned in most other countries, including Britain, Canada and the USA, and it's allowed at levels up to 1% in foods in the USA. The Cancer Decision Annulment The European legal system annulled the decision that made titanium dioxide a cancerous classified chemical because they said it had been based on insufficient evidence. And I'm going to quote here. The requirement to base the classification of a carcinogenic substance on reliable and acceptable studies was not satisfied. The court found that the risk assessment process used to classify titanium dioxide as a carcinogen did not take all the relevant factors into account, particularly that titanium dioxide particles are only carcinogenic to breathe when they are in a particular form, physical state and size and only when the lungs are already overloaded. So, is it allowed in food? The annulment doesn't affect titanium dioxide's status as a food additive. The European Food Safety Agency has not changed its decision, and the additive is still banned in food in Europe. It's still allowed in other countries. Where might you be exposed to titanium dioxide? In Europe, the EFSA listed the main sources of dietary exposure as fine bakery wares, soups, broths, sauces, salads, savoury-based sandwich spreads, and processed nuts. In America, you will find titanium dioxide in coffee creamer, salad dressing, candy and sweets, chocolate, chewing gum, snacks, sauces, and vitamin supplements. But is it safe or not? The challenge with safety risk assessments for titanium dioxide is that the size of the particles affects what happens to them when eaten. Particles of titanium dioxide do accumulate in the body, but it's not known exactly how bad that might be. Smaller particles of titanium dioxide have different technical characteristics to larger particles, and it's thought that modern titanium dioxide food additives might have much smaller particles than they did in the past. The problem is that much of the safety data about titanium dioxide in food was conducted decades ago when the particles were probably bigger. Nanoparticles generally possess dramatically different physiochemical properties compared to fine particles of the same chemical compound, and there is evidence that nanoparticles are more toxic than larger particles. For example, nanoparticles of titanium dioxide that are injected in high doses can induce pathological lesions of the liver, sorry, lesions of the liver, spleen, kidneys, and brain. In other study, in another study, nanoparticles were 40 times better at inducing lung damage than fine particles. 
The pharmaceutical research industry has been investigating the use of nanoparticles of titanium dioxide to deliver oral drugs effectively. In their studies, it's been found to be effective at moving from the gut into other tissues in rats. While eating small amounts of titanium dioxide is probably harmless, we don't know how much is too much. There's not enough data to set a safety limit, and this is the basis of the EFSA ruling that banned its use as a food additive. Skittles lawsuit. A man sued Mars Wrigley in the USA, claiming that their candy, Skittles, contains a known toxin, and by that he means titanium dioxide, and that that makes it unfit for human consumption. And just so you know, Skittles in Europe don't contain the additive. What can you use instead of E171? This article, um, and there is of course a link in the post, describes a new additive that works as a natural whitening agent. It's based on calcium carbonate and rice protein encapsulation, and it provides excellent opacity. Other alternatives to E171 are based on cornstarch, calcium phosphate, and proprietary emulsion technology and rice starch. Are there other additives banned in Europe but allowed in the USA? Yes, including the additive azodicarbonamide. I'm going to try that again. Azodicarbonamide, a whitening agent that is used in the US in bakery foods like breads, bagels, pizza, and pasties. I think it, I think it should say pastries actually. Azodicarbonamide has been banned in Europe for more than a decade. The clean food movement calls it the yoga mat chemical because it is used in other consumer plastics. It's been linked to cancer in mice. And as always, you will find all the sources for everything I've said in this section in the email and post. There's also a link to a in-depth article about how the US and the EU uh, conduct their food additive safety assessments.